hello? Yes? Mm, yes? Yes, this is Edgar Bergen's payphone. Charlie McCarthy listening, yeah. The, who? The, oh, you want to talk to Bergen? Yeah, I'll get him, I'll get him. Bergen, it's for you. Oh, thank you, Charlie, thank you. Yes, hello? Yes, this is Edgar Bergen. Yes. Oh, yes, of course, yes. What's he saying, what's he saying? Why, certainly. Well, I'd be glad to. Yes, indeed, yes. Thank you, thank you. Goodbye. Yeah, uh, who was it, Bergen? Well, you know, uh, it was that uh, Lady Esther Screen Guild players. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. And they're going to do Walt Disney's uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs on the radio. Yeah. And what do you think? Uh, well, uh, I give up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know the little uh, 14-year-old Mary Jane Smith who sings out at Metro-Golden-Mayer? Charming girl, utterly charming. Yes. Yeah. Well, she's going to play and sing the role of Snow White. Isn't that nice? Yes. Yeah. And that funny Charles Kemper is going to play one of the dwarfs, Sneezy. Is that so? El Gesundheit. No, 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 thank you. <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, you know, in Snow White, uh, how, how the prince rides in on a white horse? Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, they want me for that. No. Yes. Yeah. Well, what part of the horse are you going to play? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> No, they want me to play the prince. Oh, come now, Bergen. The manpower shortage is over, isn't it? No. <laughs> Nevertheless, they've asked me to play the prince. And if I do say so myself... You're the only one who will. <laughs> I, I look rather well in purple tights. You in tights? Yes. With those Duncan Fife legs? No, we <laughs> <laughs> And that figure? What's wrong with my figure? Oh, nothing. If you care for avocados, we're... <laughs> Well, I can just see myself in the part. Yeah. The prince is a strong, handsome man with blue eyes and lots of blonde, wavy hair. Oh, stop torturing yourself. <laughs> it's not only a good part, but it's a wonderful story. Yeah, well, what, what is the story about, Bergy? Well, I'm surprised that you don't know. I'm sorry. Why, Snow White. Snow White is... Uh, Snow White is immortal. Yeah? Yeah. Well, who isn't once in a while? No, no, no. <laughs> well, uh, I can see that you don't know the story, do you? Uh, well, I would... Uh, uh, no, no, I don't really. I might just as well be honest with you. No, you don't know it. No, sir. I'm sorry, too. Awfully sorry. Yes, I know. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> well, if you've never heard the story of Snow White, well, then you've... You've never heard the story of Snow White. Well, now, there's a hunk of logic. <laughs> and I shall tell you the story. I was afraid of that. Yeah. Well, just so it won't be a, a total loss of time, I'll mark a deck of cards. No, 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 you won't. <laughs> now, we have several versions of Snow White. Uh, which one do you prefer? Uh, the silent version. No, no, no. <laughs> Once upon a time... The date has been verified, I trust. Yes. <laughs> Once upon a time, long, long ago. Funny nothing ever happens nowadays. Have you noticed that? <laughs> there lived a beautiful princess named Snow White. She had a very wicked stepmother who made her work night and day. I know the type. Yes. Probably paid the kid 75 cents a week to... No, no. no. <laughs> her stepmother, the cruel queen, didn't pay her a cent but made her work as a scullery maid, cleaning, scrubbing floors, and washing dishes. Uh, she was no fool. Help is hard to get, you know. Yeah. When her work was through, little Snow White would go out into the garden and sit by the wishing well. She gazed into the well and would sing, I'm wishing, and the echo answered back, I'm wishing, I'm wishing, I'm wishing. Monotonous, isn't it? <laughs> Shh, listen, Charlie, listen. Want to know a secret? Promise not to tell. We are standing by.
And now, Charlie, in order to better understand this beautiful story, let's journey back to the time of Snow White. Shall I pack a lunch? No, 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 no. <laughs> now, we find ourselves at the castle of the beautiful Wicked Queen. You know, that's what I like about radio. It's so flexible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that queen there. Look at the great stone tower there. Yeah, well, now, which is it? Well, uh, 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 <laughs> well we all make mistakes, aren't we? See the great stone tower? Yeah. And those guards in armor standing by? Yeah, well, where's the queen? Well, I don't know. Let's climb up and peek in this window. Well, what do you see? There she is. That's the wicked queen standing by the magic mirror. Oh, mirror. Who's she talking to? Quite, she'll hear you. Oh, magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? Is she kidding? Shh. Quite, the mirror is going to answer. Famed is thy beauty, majesty, but one is still more fair than thee. Alas for her. Reveal her name. Lips red as a rose, hair black as ebony, skin white as snow. Snow White. Well, what happened then? Well, at finding she is no longer the most beautiful woman in the land, the wicked queen decides to do away with Snow White. She sends one of her henchmen to kill Snow White. No. And to bring back her heart as proof of the wicked deed. But the henchman couldn't bring himself to kill the lovely princess. So instead, he killed a boar. Anyone we know? Shh. <laughs> Certainly not. He brought back the boar's heart and gave that to the queen and said, Here is the heart of Snow White. And the queen answered, Well done, well done, my true and faithful servant. Just tell it, don't ham it, all right. <laughs> well, what happened to Snow White? Well, the queen's henchman left her in the cold, dark forest to die. But she didn't die. Stubborn kid, ain't she? No. <laughs> For hours, Snow White wandered about in the dense forest until at long last, she stumbled on a little cottage. I had a clumsy fool. No, no. <laughs> she, well, I don't know. He said she stumbled on it. Well, well, she, she didn't stumble on the cottage. She, she stumbled into it. Oh, a snootful. No, no. no. <laughs> what was the house like? Oh, well, it was the most unusual. All the chairs and tables were very tiny, and the beds were the smallest you've ever seen. That must have been cute, huh? Well, it wasn't, no. No? No, it was the most messy, untidy house you've ever seen. Yeah? Can you imagine it? I don't have to. I live in it. No, no. <laughs> there, there were dirty dishes all about and dust in every corner. So Snow White got a broom and tidied up the little house. And it was spick and span as it had never been before. Snow White was so tired that she went upstairs and fell asleep. Yeah, well, well, who, who, who the man that lives in this house? Now, who, who, who is it? Well, I'll tell you. The tiny house is the dwelling place of seven little dwarves. Dwarves? Yes. They spend all day working in their gold mine, and they're very happy little fellows. And they always sing as they go to and from work. Yeah? By golly, I think I can hear the little beggars now. <laughs> hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. Whatever done this ain't down here, so it must be upstairs. And I say, whatever it is, we got to go up there and get it. And so they go upstairs, creeping up the steps with clubs in their hands. Slowly, quietly, they open the door. 
And then... Charlie, would you like to know what happens then? Oh, yeah, I suppose so, Bergen, yeah. Well, you don't seem very anxious. Oh, sure I am. I'm awful anxious, Bergen, but, uh, well, uh, don't you, don't you have to save something for the second act? <laughs> Lady Esther has presented Act One of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, starring Edgar Bergen, Mary Jane Smith, and Charles Kemper. The second act of the Lady Esther Screen Guild play will follow in a moment. Now, a word from Lady Esther. I'm sure every woman at one time or another has had this experience. You feel wonderful. Your dress is becoming. Your hair looks well. But somehow, you don't look as well as you feel. Your skin seems dull, doesn't seem as fresh-looking as you'd like it. Skin authorities tell me this is often caused by a stubborn, clinging film which comes from makeup, dust in the air, and the natural skin oils. This film hides half the beauty of your skin. Ordinary cleansing fails to remove it. Rubbing only forces it in deeper. But I'll tell you the modern scientific way to remove this stubborn film. Once a day, smooth on Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream and wipe it off. Then, the important part, immediately repeat. Again apply the cream and again wipe it off. You will see that the first time removes surface soil and makeup, but the second time gets out that stubborn, clinging film, and you'll instantly see the difference, the clearer, fresher, younger look of your skin. Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream is so gentle and soft. The cream itself does the work. It doesn't need rubbing and massaging in. It needs no help from any other cream. When you try this refreshing treatment with Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream, count the compliments you receive next day. It will surprise you, I know. And now Lady Esther presents the second act of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, starring Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, with Mary Jane Smith as Snow White, Charles Kemper as Sneezy, and Mortimer Snurd still to be heard from as Bashful. Well, as soon as the seven little dwarfs discovered Snow White asleep in their beds, they woke her up and she sat up there, staring at them. And then she said... Uh, Oh, I know you. You must be Doc. Howdy. And you must be happy. <laughs> Howdy. And you must be grumpy. Howdy. <clears throat> and don't think I don't mean it. And you're sleepy. Oh, yeah, Howdy. And what is your name? My name is Sneezy. I you. Sneezy. Silly, isn't it? <laughs> Why do they call you Sneezy? I guess it's on the counter because I... I'll give you three guesses. Is it because you sneeze once in a while? That's right, it's because I sneeze. Once in a while, she says. What makes you sneeze like that? I'm sort of sickly. I... Got a fever. What kind of a fever? I... Well, I can't say it, because it makes me sneeze just to hear the word. Is it spring fever? Uh-uh. Scarlet fever? Uh, uh, please, just skip it, will you? Is it hay fever? <laughs> you said the word, didn't you? I don't want you to say that word. You mean that you sneeze every time anyone mentions hay? Yeah, there, there, you say. You said it again now. Oh, I'm so sorry, Sneezy. Are you all right now? Oh, sure, I'm all right. I'll be fine as long as I don't mention hay again. Hey, <laughs> hey. Change the subject, Sneezy. My, this is a pretty house you have here. Yes, and it's all ours. No mortgage. We paid a thousand gold pieces for this place. That certainly is a lot of money. It ain't hay. 
help you? No, it's too late. I, I, I got a headache. <laughs> well, why don't you lie down and rest for a while? That's a good idea. I'm going right upstairs and hit the hay. Help! <laughs> 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 I guess you must be bashful. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, I'd like to talk to you, bashful. Tell me, do people really frighten you? Oh, well, it's about, um, it's about, uh, 50-50, I guess. <laughs> I never saw anyone so bashful. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm bashful. I'm so bashful, I, I won't get undressed at night if I'm in the room. <laughs> well, what is it that makes all you boys so small? Well, you see, we're, we're what they call, um, Oh, what is it they call us now? Uh, we're, we're what they call uh, wart, warts. Uh, that's what we are. Oh, you yeah. don't mean warts. Yeah, yeah, uh, gnomies, gnomies. They call oh, us. You mean that you're a dwarf? Yeah, well, that's the fellow, yeah. yeah that's the fellow. Well, just what is a dwarf? Well, a dwarf, it's, it's something like a, oh, I don't know, something like a, like a miggot. Uh, oh. <laughs> Not miggot. Well, a giblet, I guess. I guess. You don't mean <laughs> You don't mean giblet. No. You mean midget. That's the word, yeah. That's the word, yeah. Then why didn't you tell me? Well, I can't say midget type. <laughs> oh, I've never met anyone quite like you. How old are you, Bashful? No, oh, I don't know. It keeps changing every year. I can't. <laughs> well, I have no place to go, and the boy said I could stay here. I hope we can be friends. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, uh, by the way, are you are you doing anything Saturday night? <laughs> Why, no. Oh, well, uh, can I borrow your soap? <laughs> <laughs> well, Charlie, you can imagine the dwarfs were mighty pleased about having Snow White as their guest. Yes, even little old sourpuss Grumpy and Snow White was delighted with all of them. And so they went down to dinner. And afterward, they sang and they danced. And after that, Snow White told them about her prince. Snow White live happily ever after with the dwarfs, or did she find her prince? Well, I'll tell you, Charlie. The wicked queen consulted her mirror, uh -huh, and found out that little Snow White was still alive. Uh-oh. So she determined to put her in a deep sleep. How did she do it? Did you tell her a story? No, no, no. No, no Charlie. No, she, she prepared a poison apple. Oh, she's wicked to the core, that woman. Yeah. <laughs> And this apple contained an ancient poison. Upon eating it, Snow White would fall into a death-like trance. She could be awakened only by love's first kiss. So now, with the poison apple in her hand, we find the wicked queen disguised as a witch on her way to the home of the seven dwarfs. Look at her. She's old, haggard, ugly, and wrinkled. Would you like an apple, my dear? A nice rosy apple? A very special kind of apple? 
special kind of apple? Yes, a magic apple. One bite and all your dreams will come true. <laughs> oh, let me see. What shall I wish for? I know. I wish my prince would come and find me and carry me away to his castle. Yeah, fine, fine. Yes. Now take a bite, my dear. <laughs> that's it, that's it. <laughs> I feel strange. Oh. Success, success. Snow White, they'll think you're dead. They'll bury you here, and I'll be the fairest in the land. <laughs> Woman. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, poor little Snow White. I feel sorry for her. Yes, Charlie. And the dwarfs did too. Yeah. They thought she was dead, but she was so beautiful, they didn't have the heart to bury her. They laid her to rest in a very beautiful glass coffin in the middle of the forest. Well, then what happened? Well, now, now we come to the part of the prince. Right here is where I enter. Right here is where I leave. No, no. <laughs> In this scene, I'm galloping through the forest on my beautiful white charger. Side saddle, I suppose. No, no. <laughs> and I come upon Snow White lying in her glass coffin, and I kneel down beside her. So far, so good. Now, how are you going to get back up again? Oh, no. <laughs> As she lies there under the evil spell, I plant a kiss on her dainty lips. And she wakes up screaming. No, no. <laughs> no, she doesn't. She opens her eyes and gazes into my face. And do you know what she says? Where's the rest of the apple? No, no. <laughs> So she steps from her coffin, I take her into my arms and put her on my great white horse, and we ride away to live happily ever after. story of Snow White, and it's the story that everyone should know. Yeah, but not everyone should tell. 
Especially you. <laughs> Nevertheless, I intend to play the role of the prince on the Lady Esther Screen Guild program. Yes, I know, but I did. Yeah. Hello? Who? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, certainly. I'll tell him, yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Well, who was it, Charlie? Well, just the people who called you about that radio show. Yes, uh, what'd they want? Oh, not much. You made a slight mistake, that's all, Bergen. A mistake? Yes, it wasn't a screen guild program. It was take it or leave it. Oh, I see, yes. <laughs> and they don't need a prince, they need a princess. Oh, they do? Yeah, and they don't want Edgar Bergen, they want Ingrid Bergman. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's all the good. Thank you, Mary Jane Smith, Charles Camper, Charlie McCarthy, and Mortimer Snurd, and you, Edgar Bergen, for appearing tonight with the Lady Esther Screen Guild players. It was a pleasure, Truman, and I believe Charlie and Mortimer will let me speak for them, too, in saying how proud we all are of the Motion Picture Relief Fund's country house and clinic, which this radio program makes possible. We hope to be back soon. Thank you, Edgar. And now, before we tell you about next week's show, here's a word from one of America's best-known beauty authorities, Lady Esther. I've had so many delighted letters from women who've discovered this little secret themselves that I've decided to pass it on to all of you who are married or engaged. It's a most unusual advantage Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream has for your men folks. Yes, your men folks. Nearly all men have trouble with their shaving. It makes their faces sore and tender, and that makes even the most amiable man feel cross and irritable. This little secret about Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream will help change that. Tell him to cover his face before shaving with Lady Esther Face Cream. Have him apply it just as you do, and then remove it. After this, he puts on his lather or brushless shaving cream, whichever he uses. This is a wonderful help to any man with tender skin and a tough beard. When he shaves, he'll see what a difference it makes. Not only will he find shaving much easier, but above all, he'll find his skin feels so much smoother, cooler, and more comfortable after shaving. So many women have written me that their husbands are simply delighted with the results. It just seems never to fail. That's why I'm pretty sure if you do give him this suggestion, you're apt to be rewarded by a very special hug and kiss. Next week. Again next week at this same time for Screen Guild Players. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.